Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's morning devotion. And um, today I'm going to read out a po portion of scripture from uh, the Gospel of Mark, uh, from um, the second chapter of, of Mark, starting at verse 13. And uh, this uh, section is entitled, Jesus Calls Levi and Eats with Sinners. And this is what it says. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and the tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he's with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. And that takes us down to... Um, verse 22 of Mark chapter 2 and um, I just had uh, something I was going to share with you today and it is from a, a man called um, Keith Warrington and um, Keith is uh, a very well respected uh, Bible teacher in the Elam movement and he started um, sending out a, a daily, um, it's, he's calling it Bible First, it's a daily reading and then a few thoughts with it um, and uh, I've signed up for that so this one I'm going to share with you um, is he's calling it Jesus is always right so we can trust him and I like the sound of that you know something that we know but it's just putting it in a concise way Jesus is always right and isn't it great that um, we can walk beside Jesus who is always right and we can uh, completely rely on him and um, so let me uh, that section is the section that Keith is looking at today and let me tell you what Keith is saying to us about this section Jesus is teaching, again, and still looking for disciples. His next choice is an unusual one. He's not a likely candidate because he's a tax collector, a despised occupation to Jews. He collects money from other Jews, most of whom are already very poor, and he does this on behalf of the Roman Empire. On top of that, if he's like the majority of tax collectors, he cheats and takes a sizeable cut for himself. No wonder that many Pharisees refused to allow their daughters to marry tax collectors. Some synagogues even refused to allow tax collectors to attend their services, and that went for their extended families as well. But Jesus chose Matthew, who was probably as shocked as anyone. But note, he immediately follows Jesus. He models a true disciple, following Jesus as soon as Jesus asks him. It's now that Jesus begins to give other people the opportunity to revere or reject him, to believe in him or to try to break him. The first action relates to his choosing to eat with the worst sinners in town, including other tax collectors, people who aren't his followers yet and may never be. Jesus goes to them. Jewish rules of behaviour dictated that certain people were undesirable guests at a meal, but Jesus is prepared to leap over all barriers to meet people where they are. Then, when religious leaders question him concerning fasting, Jesus declares that he has the authority to determine when fasting should occur. He doesn't defend his attitude, he simply offers three metaphors which support the view that there's a right time and a wrong time to fast. So, as it's inappropriate for people to fast with a bridegroom prior to his wedding, or to place a new piece of cloth on an old garment, or to pour new wine into old wineskins, so also Jesus states that it's inappropriate for his disciples to fast. In other words, Jesus is stating that it's up to him to decide 
when it's appropriate to fast. He leaves his audience with a question. Will they choose to accept his authority or not? Jesus knows what he's doing and he's always right. He is the perfect managing director of our lives and so we're safe. And this is a response that uh, Keith has at the bottom of this devotional. And it's in the, uh, the form of a prayer. Lord, I want to trust you more, but sometimes it's difficult because of what I'm experiencing. The more I read about you in the Bible, the more I realise that you're in control. And that gives me real hope. And um, I, I, I liked what Keith had to say about this. And it is um, a true thing that, you know, Jesus looks at the heart. He looks past uh, what maybe we would look at, that things that would put us off people. Um, Jesus looks right in to see who people really are. And it's a good um, lesson for us. Uh, you know, many, many years ago when my children were small, um, they were involved in a local uh, playgroup. And I went along one day and there was this really scary looking punk woman. Um, and I sort of took one look at her and bit timid I thought oh dear I'm not going to speak to her she looks like she would bite my head off you know she looks really scary and um, I kind of avoided her but then I found out that uh, this person was the one that was running the group and if I wanted to join the group I had to go and speak to her so I did and I just found she was the loveliest person and um, you know what she was presenting with her physical appearance was completely at odds with the person that she was and that taught me a bit of a lesson that day as well, that, um, you know, we shouldn't just look at the outside. We need to see past what people are presenting to us. And, you know, some people might look, it's not their physical presentation, but they might be presenting a bit of a prickly hedgehog um, demeanour. And sometimes there's reasons for that. And it's, it's important for us to try and, and see past that as well, if we can, and just see who people really are. Um, and so, you know, the Lord can help us with that because that's how he lived and worked while he was on this earth. Shall we pray together? Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much that this is how you operate, Lord. You do um, look right into the heart, Lord. You do see us who we really are. And it's just as well sometimes, Lord, because we can get so easily caught up with the things that don't matter, the external things. But thank you, Lord, that you always see inside. You always see what's there. And uh, Lord, I just want to pray today that, that you would help us to do the same. Lord, that you'd help us to see people the way that you see them. And especially in these days, Lord, where people may well be fearful and, and acting in ways that are not normal for them. Um, Father, I just pray that you would help us, Lord, to see what you see so that we could bring um, your love to people who are hurting and finding it difficult at the moment. Lord, thank you that you are always right. Lord, that we can trust you and we know that these things are true. And Lord, again, I just pray that you would help us to share these truths, Lord, that are part of our lives and part of our very being with those that we come in contact with, Lord, whether that be neighbours, work colleagues, family members, whether it's even someone that we're just standing alongside um, in a queue somewhere. Um, Father, I just pray that, you know, now things are beginning to open up. We're getting out and about a bit more. We're mixing with people a bit more. And um, I certainly have found people are more ready to have a conversation with a stranger, even if it's about how uncomfortable the masks are. Uh, and so, Lord, help us to be ready. Help us to be alert, Lord, for the opportunity uh, to share the, the reason for our hope, which is you. And we thank you so much once more, Lord, that we have that hope, that we have you in our lives. Lord, I ask for your blessing to be upon us, each and every one today, Lord, and that you would help us to keep our eyes completely focused on you this day. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us for these few minutes and uh, God bless you. And we'll see you again really soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.